Hello, my name is Chloe Day and my group will be tackling the issue of drowning amongst college students and their local communities. According to a recent report from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, around 10 people die every single day from a non-boating related unintentional drowning in the United States. This adds up to over 3,500 deaths every single year. In addition, 300 more deaths occur every year due to unintentional drownings in boating-related incidents, which I myself have experienced. When I was very young, my family and friends went on a boating trip on a lake nearby. I was riding a tube, which flipped over, and I was dragged underwater for several minutes. One of my family lifeguard friends had to resuscitate me, and I was really lucky not to have experienced some of the more serious consequences that drowning can and often does have. These include severe brain damage, memory loss, learning abilities, and a permanent basic loss of functioning, which often results in a coma. These effects are serious and very unlikely to be reversed in most cases. According to a World Life Expectancy website, unintentional drowning rates are highest in the southeastern United States, with younger populations being the most at-risk group to suffer the consequences. Nationally, the American Red Cross found in a survey that over half of Americans cannot execute basic swimming skills, and that 46% have had an experience with water where they feared drowning. They also reported that young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 experienced more near-drowning experiences than any other age group. We sent out a survey with similar questions to UK students and our peers, and we found that about 67% of college students knew someone without basic swimming skills, which is a number far higher than the Red Cross survey indicated. This makes sense as the University of Kentucky's location places itself right in the heart of America's drowning epidemic. Without a change in the course of action taken against drowning, these numbers will continue to rise and college students will suffer as more of our peers' lives are put at risk. The last thing students need to worry about these days is losing one of their peers due to an issue which has had a solution for hundreds of years. One more recent approach to the drowning issue was implementing a mandatory swim test for all undergraduate students at several universities like the University of Notre Dame, Dartmouth, and MIT. Now, Chris will tell you what happened and what we believe needs to be done to improve Notre Dame's plan. At the University of Kentucky, we would like to apply a similar but expanded approach by involving faculty as well. By implementing a truly school-wide swim test, the university can be confident all of its community members' abilities to stay safe in the water no matter the circumstances. The swimming test that we would like to model includes two swimming laps, treading water, and safely entering and exiting the pool. These skills are outlined by MD Linda Kwan in a Red Cross publication defining water competency and its importance in society today. The test will be implemented gradually for faculty and students already at UK, while incoming freshmen will take the test during their orientation. Faculty will take their test during training, and current students will have to fill out a form selecting a date that works best for them to complete the test. If students fail their swim test, they will have to add a semester-long, one-credit-hour swimming course to their schedule, and if the faculty are unable to pass, they will be required to take swimming lessons during an allotted time period each week in their shift. Advisors will be equipped with the most recent test results so that scheduling changes can be made as quickly as possible for older students pursuing graduation in a year or less. However, a generic swim test is not as effective on its own, so by adding proper water safety educational material, we can further improve the awareness of water incompetency dangers to those who need it most. Students who participate in Greek life at any university are more at risk to be exposed to bodies of water while intoxicated, making them a vulnerable pop population to drowning. In order to further protect this group of students, specific education on water safety and competency will be added onto their mandatory FSL 101 course. This would include video on drowning statistics, processes, and how to stay safe around bodies of water, whether it's pools, lakes, rivers, or even the ocean. Only two inches of water is needed to cause someone to drown. While in theory, this grand plan sounds like it'll put an end to drownings as we know it, the devil can be in the details. Livy will help to explain the problems we encountered with this plan and how we plan to fix them. Funding such an expensive innovation has a much simpler solution than it may seem. The Lancaster Aquatic Center at UK already has its own budget and staff for maintaining upkeep and water safety on the pool's premise. No new faculty would need to be added, nor would the current space need much, if any, new renovation. 
to accommodate for this new course of action. However, to alleviate possible hiring needs in the cost of extra chemical and water safety supplies, we would like to increase each orientation fee by $25. And as there's predicted to be a little over 5,000 incoming freshmen for the 2020 to 2021 academic school year, there will be a total of $125,000 being put towards funding the swim exams and lessons alone. The Lancaster Aquatic Center is already a large enough facility with enough lane space to efficiently allow for testing to occur during orientation, even with the large amounts of incoming freshmen that will need testing. The pool itself has 18 lanes available before converting the diving well into even more lanes for students who are more confident in their ability to pass the swimming exam. UK normally offers 12 full-length summer orientation programs, meaning only 417 students would need to be tested during orientation. If these students were split in half as orientation only lasts two days, that means only 209 students would need to be tested each day, meaning it would take about an hour and a half each day for everyone to be tested. These calculations help prove both logistically and financially that this course of action can be undertaken at the University of Kentucky without much repercussion. Looking past these financial and resource issues, Meredith will help explain how our plan can have a more widespread impact on the nation. With approval of this plan from UK President Eli Capilouto, the swim test could be effectively set into action, changing lives within the campus and Lexington community. Capilouto himself also has a lot of sway in matters pertaining to the Southeastern Conference, as he was elected president of that organization in 2019. Any examples he sets as both SEC and UK presidents will be taken more seriously by other schools in the part of the United States in which the initiative is needed most. The hope is that other SEC schools will follow suit in training their staff and students about water safety and drowning prevention practices. In doing this, the training will follow staff and students to their hometowns in hopes of sparking change in their community's own water safety issues. Even training in one person could save the life of someone else, and that is worth more than any burden the university could face financially or otherwise. If saving lives wasn't enough for universities to want to implement this program, I think it is important to mention that swimming also helps to alleviate stress levels significantly in adults and is often recommended in medical cases because of its accessibility to people of all ages. The skill that we are begging universities to teach their students is one that teaches them so much more than just physical safety. It allows students a space to learn, fail, try again, and overcome obstacles that would have plagued them their entire lives. If you are without water skills or you know someone who is, please do not be afraid to seek out help. If you are someone who knows how to swim, do not forget what a privilege that is and seek to help others gain that same sense of security around the water that you have. Together, we can help those 3,500 people that are supposed to die from drowning this year and every year after this.